Thanks for stopping by to check out Vintage Audio Review. In this episode, I am going to talk about a power amplifier. This one is the Nico Alpha 450, which was rated at 220 watts into 8 ohms, both channels driven. In 1984, it had a retail price of $1,050. And for perspective, a 1984 Toyota Corolla sold for $6,400. This is a very heavy amp. I weighed this one in at 49 pounds. It has a huge toroidal transformer, as you'll see, and huge heat sinks. It is built like a tank. It came to me with a problem. Supposedly, it was in the protect circuit mode. So after I hooked it up to the QA402 audio analyzer and my dummy loads, I powered it on, and I did not find that the amplifier was in the protect mode at all. The speaker protect relay clicked on like it normally would. However, as you'll see in some upcoming footage here, the waveforms were not great out of one of the channels. The uh, video will um, go into the repairs I made and some discussion of that and will show more of what it looks like with the cover off. There were a couple problems with the Nico was that the bulb that lights up the LED display was burned out so that was replaced and the pots were all clean. The first thing that I did was remove the fuses and check to make sure they were good and of the proper value, which they were. I then removed the cover and noticed that many of the smaller electrolytic capacitors had been replaced at one time. I hooked up my 8 ohm dubbing loads to the speaker A outputs and hooked up my QA402 analyzer to the input and began testing it. The first thing I noticed is there was no output coming out. After a little bit of playing around, I determined that the speaker A relay output did not work. If I hooked up to speaker B, I was fine with the testing. So already I've got another problem to fix. The waveforms that I saw, as you'll see here in a moment, did not look very good out of one of the channels. The waveform out of the right channel looked okay, but not the waveform out of the left channel, which you'll see here in a moment. This is the front of the Nico Alpha 450 power amp. As you can tell, it's designed to be rack mounted if you wish. Also, it does have the ability to run either A, B, or A and B speakers. There is a headphone jack which puts all of the output power of the amplifier through a pair of 390 ohm 2 watt resistors. If you turn on either of the speakers, it kills the power going to the headphones. You can see the nicely lit LED display which we'll see in action later on in this video. So here obviously is the rear of the Nico Alpha 450. You can see that it does have input level controls. For all the testing I did I ran them at max. Also it does have a grounding lug that could be used and the speaker terminals are the push-in kind. They are a bit heavy duty which is nice but they're still uh, push-in terminals, which uh, I don't like very much. Oh, one other thing I should note is that the Alpha 450 was the top of the line power amp for Nico back in 1984. So this is the top view of the Nico, and the most obvious thing that you see right away is the toroidal transformer. Things massive. Of course, these are your uh, power supply boards, and uh, here's another view showing your output transistors and uh, of course the massive heat sinks for them. So here is the bottom side of the Nico Alpha 450 with the uh, cover removed on the bottom. You can see the uh, output transistors here and here, here and here for uh, one channel and the, likewise on the other side the output transistors are there and your pre-driver board as well as your output relays for the speakers and uh, the headphone jack also is part of that. This would be your front uh, LED circuit board. And here's some more switches here. So these heat sinks are massive. And so that is the uh, underneath view. So what you are looking at here is the output across 8 ohms of a Nico Alpha 450 power amp. The left channel is horrid. Let me get rid of the right channel here. So that's the response of the left channel. It's just got a lot of distortion and uh, noise on it. 
if I get rid of uh, the left channel, bring the right one back. We can see it a lot. The right channel doesn't look uh, stupendous, but it's uh, looking a lot better than the left channel. So I just wanted to um, show you what I started with, and hopefully I'll be able to figure out what's causing the issue for this old Nico Alpha 450 power amp. So here we're looking at the culprit of why the ripple was so bad in the power supply, and you can see that the one of the uh, filter caps had leaked out and corroded uh, the trace. You can even see where it corroded onto the uh, chassis. And this is what the capacitor looked like when it was finally removed. I did replace all four of these one microfarad 100 volt capacitors. They were not replaced along with the other electrolytics um, by a previous service and decided that it was a good thing to replace them. One of them was a bit low in uh, value, but they're not that expensive or that hard to replace. So this is the A speaker relay, and right here you can see where there was uh, pitting, and I was able to clean that up with a nail file and then spray some uh, deoxid D5 in there, and it seems to work fine. One other thing that needed to be replaced is this lamp here, which transmits light to the front panel LED uh, assembly. So that bulb needed to be replaced. Here I just wanted to show the effects of having an open filter capacitor on your plus B line. In this case it's the plus B left channel and you're seeing about 25.6 volts RMS ripple. Compare that to the plus B right channel which has about 800 millivolts of ripple. A big difference. Here we have the THD and SNR at 1 kilohertz in 1 watt into 8 ohms and the THD plus noise for the right channel is not nearly as good as the left channel. The THD overall is decent and the SNR is fairly decent for a big power amp. Here is the frequency response with the amplifier into an 8 ohm load and running at 1 watt and it's down 3 dB at about 46 kilohertz. This was the most I could get out of the Nico Alpha without it getting into a lot of distortion so we're at about 240 or 45 watts depending on the channel at 1 kilohertz and the SNR is close to 100 dB with the THD at a respectable 0 0.00 seven percent I would say. The THD plus noise is uh, in the 80s so that is decent. Here we have the THD SNR and pretty much the max power into four ohms. I could get a little bit more power out but my uh, load power rating is 400 watts so I didn't really want to get the load too hot. As you can tell the SNR is pretty good as well as the THD and the THE plus noise still has the right channel a bit lower than the left. But overall, it looks pretty good at 420 watts into 4 ohms. As I was finishing up this video, I realized that I kind of just jumped from the bad waveform to, oh, here's a bad capacitor causing the problem. Well, it didn't quite go as fast as that. I made a big mistake as far as uh, spending a lot of extra time that I didn't need to by forgetting that there were indeed two separate power supplies, one for each channel. And of course the channel that I looked at was the right channel and the plus and minus B had no ripple on it. Had I looked at the left channel I would have seen that horrible ripple on there and that would have saved me a lot of time. That being said, I ended up replacing all four of the big electrolytic caps they were probably about $18 or $19 a piece from Mauser, and they fit in the same footprint as the ones that I pulled out. While I am normally not one to replace capacitors just because they're old, in this case, you could see some little bulges on the vent holes starting, and I figured it would be a good time just to go for it and replace all four of them. So I just wanted to point that out in all fairness. Once I had completed all of the repairs and adjustments on the Alpha 450, I hooked it up to my reference system, which would be the KEF 107s and my 
Carver CT7 tuner preamp. When all that was hooked up and I turned on the power amp, I noticed a hum, like a 60 hertz hum coming out. And it was definitely from the power amp. After five minutes or so, the hum disappeared and I never heard it again once the amp had been warmed up. Or if you turned off the amp and waited a few minutes and turned it back on, it would not show any hum. I think the hum is related to the drift of the idle current stabilizing and it just might be the way the amp is but it wasn't really a problem. As far as listening to it, it sounded great. I was able to hit 100 dB SPL peaks and it had just a, a nice sound that you would expect from a power amp. It drove the speakers fine into levels that I was very comfortable with and I like watching the power meter which you'll see a short little video of. I think these amps might be a little bit hard to find these days but if you run across one and have a chance of getting Nico's top of the line amplifier from 1984 I would go for it. Again thanks for watching I would enjoy hearing any comments I think and Please subscribe if you have not. And once again, have a great day or night.